The other thing is that you want to avoid this. That's not good because it's not sustainable. You can't play fast that way. It'll just <laughs> start to be like that. So you want to see if there's a way you could pick where you just go straight through the string without coming out. Hey everybody, Gary here with Guitar Tricks and in this lesson I'm going to share with you five tips for developing faster and more accurate picking technique. Before we get into it, please go ahead and click subscribe so that you get all the latest and greatest content from Guitar Tricks. So before we get started, I just want to give a quick note on picks. So most people that play lead guitar and are just playing single notes prefer a more rigid pick that's at least about one millimeter in thickness. So this Jim Dunlop heavy pick I have, I believe is one millimeter. And then I've got like a Fender medium pick here, which is about 0.8, I would say. A heavier pick is going to be more conducive to speed, accuracy, and also kind of a thicker tone. And the reason for that is because a medium pick like this one, it's a little flexible. So when you try to go through the string, it bends a little bit. And the fact that it bends, that it's kind of floppy, means that you have to go a little further to get it to go through. You have to use a little more energy. Whereas with the thick, being it's very rigid, the pick is gonna go right through the string with minimal energy. Now a lot of people will also tell you that a smaller pick is better, like the Dunlop Jazz size or whatever, because then you just have more control. In my experience, the teardrop size, which is the most standard size, is just more versatile for combining rhythm techniques and lead techniques. And you could always just choke up on the pick if you want it to feel smaller. So that's just personal preference, but pretty much everyone unanimously will agree that a more rigid pick is better for faster picking. Also, these five tips are aimed more at beginners that are looking to just go from that really beginner level to being able to play some of their favorite licks fluently and comfortably. So the first tip is to relax. You wanna make sure that there's no tension in your body and in your hands as you're trying to play because that's gonna slow you down and get in the way as you're trying to go from string to string and note to note. So if we just take something like the A minor pentatonic scale, you're going for completely relaxed, but still in control. So at a slow tempo that works for you, try to play this while paying special attention to how relaxed your hand feels and your wrist and your arm you want it all to be relaxed yet in control as opposed to you know this is more tight and rigid I want relaxed and in control very relaxed And that brings us to our second tip, which is very much tied into the first tip, and that is to use as little movement and effort as possible. So a lot of times when people are starting out, they have these big movements of the hand and it gets in the way of the accuracy, it slows you down, and it's just so much wasted energy. So as you go through that scale again, want to go through the string just enough to get the sound that you want. So I'm only going about a centimeter past the string. The other thing is that you want to avoid this. That's not good because it's not sustainable. You can't play fast that way. It'll just <laughs> start to be like that. So you wanna see if there's a way you could pick where you just go straight through the string without coming out. So 
So as you can see here, I'm just kind of, I'm finding a way to just go straight through and back. So for me, that requires having the kind of chicken head hold on the pick where my hand is parallel and the pick comes out this way. And I plant my forearm and a little bit of the side of my hand on the strings as I come down. And that allows me to do that. The way that you hold your hand in order to get it to go straight through the string and not out like that, I notice that varies from player to player. Some players come more from the bottom like this. But for me, I'm more on top. Or even planted. But no matter what, you want that minimal motion. As little past it as possible. And then just come right back. Tip number three is to perfect your technique at a slow tempo before trying to go fast. So playing at a slow tempo has two benefits. One, it allows you to really focus on developing good habits because you could go slow enough that you could actually see what's going on and you're in complete control and you can modify your technique to make it perfect. The second big benefit is that practicing at slow tempos improves your sense of timing. So it's harder to feel time when it's moving slowly. It's easier when it's fast. Like if a song's really fast, it's easy to clap along. If it's really slow, it's harder to really feel that beat. So practicing at a slow tempo is one of those pro secrets where you think pros that are so fast, everything they do is fast, but most that I've met learn things really slowly before speeding them up. And I'm just gonna set a metronome for 60 beats per minute. So this is a nice slow tempo, but not too slow that you can't feel it. And I'm gonna do that A pentatonic at a slow tempo, just focusing on that minimal motion, relaxed hand. First, I'm just gonna do all downstrokes on the beat, and then I'm gonna do alternate picking, and I'm gonna do two notes per beat. So I'll show you. One, two, here we go. picking so then once you feel really comfortable with that tempo gradually increase write down in your practice journal what tempos you're at keep track of where you're at and always try to figure out where your limit is but don't go beyond your limit if it starts to get really sloppy or you can start to develop bad habits. Now, I'm just using the A minor pentatonic scale as an example, but follow these same principles with anything you practice. The fourth tip is to learn how to pick in three different ways. And the three different ways are with the arm, the wrist, and the fingers. Every player uses some ratio of these three and most players switch between the three or change the ratio of the three depending on what they're trying to play. So it's good to practice all three ways of picking. So here's an example. I'm gonna play that A minor pentatonic scale using all fingers, so watch this. So that was all fingers. I'm just going like this. I'm just using the fingers. that my, my hand is not moving or my arm. Now you might, ne might not necessarily be able to get a lot of speed out of this, but you can get a really good accuracy and control. Now this is going to be all wrist. So for that one, it's all about getting the motion in here. And then the last one is all arm. I find this one the most difficult. <laughs> 
For me, it's the most difficult to go across strings with that one, but there are some players out there that do all arm for everything. Um, what I find all arm most effective for is tremolo picking. Just going really fast through one note on one string. Because to me, the all arm has the most tension because you have to keep this all tight. But I found that by practicing all of those, it just makes me feel more free to adjust my technique depending on what I'm playing. The fifth tip is to prioritize learning actual music over exercises. If all you're learning is exercises, when it comes time to actually solo or play riffs and stuff, it's gonna feel foreign because melodies and song riffs are not exercises. They're constructed very differently. So you could actually treat song material and solos and riffs as your exercises. So in other words, instead of... Maybe you hear a riff that goes... Or whatever your favorite riff is, use that as your material. And approach it the same way. Go slow at first, use a metronome, focus on how relaxed and how little movement you're using. But I would recommend going the extra step and figuring out with that riff, what key is it in and what scale does it use, right? So then you're still understanding and learning your scales, but within the context of music. So let's say you heard that riff. You might just think of it as random notes you're playing, but go that extra step to figure out, oh, okay, it's in A minor pentatonic. So now, I can play that whenever I want to play something in A minor pentatonic, or I could play some variation of that. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you want to learn more about playing guitar, head over to guitartricks.com. If you want to see more lessons like this, please subscribe. Have fun, happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson.